The partnership between Uber Eats and McDonald's is putting a strain on the franchisee owners because Uber Eats takes 20% of each food delivery transaction. The owner, the franchisee, pays that. John Taffer is with us, bar rescue host. Great to see you again, John. Welcome back. Good to see you. Good to be here, Stuart. Delivery is absolutely everything. McDonald's needs delivery. Is that true, the, the restaurant business these days? Well, you know, when they do the analysis, they determine that delivery business doesn't erode in-store business. They've really identified them as two different customer groups. So McDonald's corporate is trying to say to the franchise community, this is incremental business. It doesn't erode what's happening inside your restaurant, so you shouldn't complain. But the corporate franchisor, McDonald's, makes their money off the top, Stuart. Yeah. Whereas the franchisee makes it off the bottom. 20% is a big hit on the bottom. So you think but it's this, a legitimate complaint? I mean, if you're taking 20% oh, off the check, I mean, that's a big deal. Absolutely. And it can cause backups in the kitchen to make people wait for food uh, uh, that are already in the restaurant. So there's operational implications. But other companies like Subway has an issue with, with the $5 foot long. You know, again, yeah. corporate makes the same money, but the franchisee is eating that expense. So there's this push and pull between the franchisors placing mm -hmm. promotions and the franchisees sometimes not liking them. I, I got a number here, and it's from McDonald's. Three billion dollars worth of McDonald's food delivered in one year. Three billion dollars wow. worth. That's how big this delivery thing is. I, I'm really shocked at that, John. Well, it's a huge number, Stuart, but if you're not making enough money on it, then what's the point? Yeah. It still has to be a profitable $3 billion. Okay. We mm. had on our program recently the president of the NFIB, uh, small business operation, Juanita Duggan, was with us. She said, look, small businesses are having real trouble finding workers, qualified workers. Job applicants show up. They can't pass a background check. They can't pass drug tests. They don't look good. They arrive late. She says there's a real problem with entry-level labor. Do you see the same problems? I do. And, you know, I think that this is sort of a consequence of the Trump economy. Uh, uh, so many people are working. Job opportunity is great. I remember several months ago, Stuart, 3.1 million people left jobs to get better jobs. Mm -hmm. So there's a confidence in the workplace. Everybody that's really competent and really wants to work is working now. If they're not, then there's a reason why. And we're starting to hire what I call the reasons why. Yeah. And they're, they're not the same as the no reasons why. And that's what we're seeing. And it's a result of a robust economy and low unemployment. Well, John, you're a tough guy. I know you. I watch your show. I mean, you've got, no. you've got a whole channel these days. But I watch it. And you're a tough guy. So what do you say if you're interviewing for an entry-level job and somebody fronts up and they're late? Or they don't look good. Or they don't, you know, they just do something wrong. What do you say? Do you throw them out? I do. In, in almost every case, Stuart. Really? You know, there's certain things that must exist for us to have a working relationship together. You know, being on time is one of the first ones. Integrity, honesty. If those things break down, there's no basis of going forward. So you bet. And once you allow them to come in late, and once you allow these things to get loose, it's very difficult to reel them back in. So you've got to hold your ground from day one and really create a policy. Would you rather throw somebody out or and leave the job open or hire somebody who ain't that good but fill the job years ago when i went to big restaurants Stuart, if i didn't hire somebody the next day to be a bus boy i was going to be washing dishes myself i never found that right person that next day i did wash dishes myself that weekend until i found the right person so the question the answer really is do you lower your standards for convenience or not a great business operator will never lower their standards for convenience. Well, I was a dishwasher in London right after <laughs> I left college, and I was a pretty good dishwasher, i got to say. I never arrived back late, in, ever. Back in those horse and buggy days you <laughs> were just talking about. Oh, very funny, Taffer. Very funny. <laughs> you may or may not appear on the show again. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I'll, I'll see you. Yeah, you'll be back. You'll be back. We love having you, John. You're a good man. Great to be here. Thank Take you, sir. Too.